Today we will talk about third and fourth degree perineal tear repair. We have already discussed how to repair first and second degree perineal tear and you can find its link in the i button in the top right corner of this video. So let us first of all talk about the importance of third and fourth degree perineal tear repair. First of all, in case of anal sphincter tear, a woman may suffer loss of control over bowel movements and gas if torn and anal sphincter is not repaired correctly. Secondly, if a tear is in the rectum and that is not repaired, the woman may suffer from infection and rectovaginal fistula. The question arises who should perform third and fourth degree perineal tear repair. Repair of third and fourth degree perineal tear should be conducted by an appropriately trained clinician or the trainee under supervision. What arrangements are essential to perform third and fourth degree perineal repair? First of all, repair should take place in operating theater and it should be done under regional or general anesthesia with a good lightning and appropriate instruments must be available for repair. Now what to do in case of excessive bleeding? If there is excessive bleeding, a vaginal pack should be inserted and a woman should be taken to the theater as soon as possible. What is the basic technique of repair? Repair of 4th degree laceration requires approximation of rectal mucosa, internal anal sphincter and external anal sphincter. What type of anesthesia is required? If you can't see all the edges of the tear, use either regional or general anesthesia and if you can see all the edges of the tear, use local infiltration with the lignocaine. Uterine massage and fundal massage. Ask an assistant to provide uterine and fundal massage. Then, examine the rectum to see if anal sphincter is torn, place the gloved finger in the anus and lift slightly, identify sphincter or lack of it, feel the rectum and look carefully for the tear. Next come the aseptic measures. Change a pair of sterile gloves. Apply the aseptic solution on the tear. Remove fecal materials present on the tear. Let us talk about procedure of repair of 3rd and 4th degree perineal tears. The procedure of repair begins with, first of all, introduction. Secondly, counseling. Explanation of the whole situation is given to the patient. Thirdly, the informed consent is taken from the patient. So, while performing the repair, first of all, I will retract the vaginal uh, side walls to permit the visualization of the rectal mucosa and the anal sphincters with the help of retractor. The apex of rectal mucosa is identified and the mucosa is approximated using closely spaced inter interrupted or running 3-0 polygalactin or vicryl. Now the question arises why should suture not penetrate the complete thickness of the rectal mucosa. Traditional recommendations emphasize that sutures shouldn't penetrate the complete thickness of the mucosa into the anal canal in order to avoid promoting the rectovaginal fistula formation. The sutures are continued through the anal verge onto the perineal skin. Let us talk about repair of internal anal sphincter. I will identify the internal anal sphincter as glistening white fibrous sphincter structure between the rectal mucosa and external anal sphincter. The structure may be retracted literally and placement of Alice clamps on the muscle ends facilitate the repair. I will repair or close it separately with the interrupted or mattress sutures by an end-to-end -end technique without any attempt to overlap uh, the internal anal sphincter with either 3-0 PDS or modern braided sutures such as 2-0 vicryl sutures. Let us talk about the end-to-end -end technique. First of all, indication. It is used to bring the ends of sphincter using sutures placed through the capsule and muscle. Second is the technique. Alice clamps are placed on each side of the external anal sphincter and the ends of the torn sphincter is joined together by interrupted sutures. Thirdly, the suture material use. We use 3-0 PDS, a delayed absorbable monofilament suture to allow the sphincter ends adequate time to score together. Outcomes. Recent evidence suggests that end-to-end -end repair have poorer anatomical and functional outcomes than was previously believed. Repair of external anal sphincter, which is full thickness. The external anal sphincter appear as band of skeletal muscles with a fibrous capsule. For the repair of full thickness external anal sphincter, uh, either an overlapping or an end-to-end -end approximation technique can be used with equivalent outcomes. Let us talk about the overlap technique of repair. First of all, indication. The overlap technique brings together the ends of the sphincter with the mattress suture and result in larger surface of the tissue contact between the two torn ends. First of all, technique. 
Dissection of external anal sphincter from the surrounding tissue is done with Metzenbund scissor that may be required to achieve adequate length for the overlapping of the muscles. Secondly, the suture is passed from the top to the bottom through the superior and inferior flap and then from bottom to top through inferior and superior flaps. The proximal end of superior flap overlies the distal portion of the inferior flap. Two more sutures are placed in the same manner. After all the sutures are placed, they are each tied singly but without strangulation. When tied, the knots on the top of the overlap sphincters ends. Care must be taken to incorporate the muscle capsules in the closure. Repair of external and sphincter that is partial thickness. For the partial thickness, that is all 3A and 3B, an end-to-end -end technique should be used type of the suture material used for external anesthesia. Suture material used is the same as that of internal anesthesia that is 3-0 PDS or modern braided sutures such as Vicryl sutures. Let us talk about aseptic measures after repair. After repair, apply antiseptic solution to the area again, examine the anus with a glove finger to ensure the correct repair of the rectum and sphincter, then change to clean sterile gloves. Repair in the layers, the vaginal mucosa, perineal muscles, and the skin. Let us talk about the post operative care of third and fourth degree perineal tear repair. First of all, keep NPO for 24 to 48 hours, means give only IV fluids. After that, start oral with only liquids. Then change diet slowly to semi solid and then non bulk forming diet. Stool softener such as docosate sodium is given to minimize the potential for repair break down from straining during defecation for one week. The use of potential laxative that is syrup lactulose 15 ml adjust is recommended to reduce the risk of wound dehiscence. Rule out the anal incontinence before discharge. Avoid anima and rectal examination. Women should be advised that physiotherapy 6 to 12 weeks after repair following repair could be beneficial. Let us talk about prophylactic antibiotics. The preferred antibiotics in case of third and fourth degree perineal tear include first of all, seafood exam IV for two days, followed by oral cephic exam for seven days, and then metronidazole IV for two days, followed by oral for five days. Wound care and analgesia. Use of the SIDS bath twice daily. For pain relief and analgesics such as ibuprofen is recommended. If the woman has excessive pain in the days after repair, she should be examined immediately because pain is frequent sign of infection in the perineal area. Let us talk about follow up after third and fourth degree perineal tear repair. Women who have have uh, who have uh, undergone obstetric anal sphincter repair should be reviewed at a convenient time, usually six to twelve weeks postpartum. In the follow up, we will do these things. First of all, history of the symptoms of anal uh, incontinence is taken. Secondly, inspection of the perineum is done. Palpation of the vagina and rectum is done. Then information about uh, possibly long latency, onset worsening of the symptoms of the anal incontinence is done, and discussed regarding the subsequent pregnancy and but if the woman is experiencing incontinence or pain at the follow-up referral to a specialist gynecologist or, or the colorectal surgeon should be considered so that was all about third and fourth degree perineal tear repair i would like to complete my presentation with this code focus on your strengths not on your weakness focus on your character not on your reputation focus on your blessings not on the misfortunes so thank you so much wish you all the best love